Hello everybody, I'm Nick. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can benchmark our .NET or c -sharp code using Benchmark.NET. Benchmarking is the act of running a computer program in order to assess the relative performance of an object. Simply put, if you have a method or a bunch of methods that you want to test how well they perform, you can use benchmarking to evaluate that and assess that. Benchmark.net is a package created by the community that is used across many projects, including Microsoft projects like Entity Framework Core, Kestrel, .NET Core, and many others. And it allows us to essentially write benchmarks in a very easy and simple way. And in this video, we're going to take a look at that. Now, I want to make this one clear. This is not about profiling. Profiling is a different thing that we also are going to take a look at in a future video. This is just about benchmarking. And the example I chose to pick up for this specific scenario showcases that because we're going to look at very, very small timings. We're going to look at nanoseconds. Now, this doesn't mean you cannot use this for things like milliseconds or even seconds. You can. But in this specific scenario, I can show you exactly how things work in that very small time unit. Because think about it, if you have a, a very high performing API that you want to optimize and you have a non-functional requirement that says, I need this API to always respond on under 30 milliseconds, then every millisecond or nanosecond or microsecond you can save counts. So this might not be for you, but I still think that this is worth knowing about because you can even use it on a higher scale. This video is part of my Dozer Core series, so if you don't want to miss any episodes, make sure you subscribe or ring the sub notification bell to get notifications when I upload a new video. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to create a class that I want to benchmark. So I'm going to go ahead and say create new class and I'm going to name this class date parser. And I create that. Yeah, I want to add it. And now in here, I'm going to add a bunch of methods that are able to get an ISO uh, date and return me the year in that date. To understand what an ISO date is, it's really a date in that format. So we have the year, the month, the day, and then T, I think, stands for time. And then we have hours, minutes, seconds, and Z means it's a UTC time. So this is the date we want to pass. And all we want to do is get this as an integer. And we're going to write a method that does that. And the first method I want to write, probably the uh, one you would use as well, and the one I would use as well, to be honest, is uh, get year from date time. So we have a parameter called date time as string, which is uh, this specific date that's going to come into our method. And we're going to say var date time equals date time dot pause. And we're going to pass this date time as string. And then we're going to say return date time dot year. And this method does what we want. It gets this string passes it as a date time and returns the year. So this is the method I'm going to benchmark first. Now to benchmark it, I need to go in NuGet and find a package called benchmark.net. And it's this one. So we're going to go ahead and add it. And with this NuGet package installed, I'm going to go here and create a new class. And I'm going to say date parser benchmarks. So here we have our class that is going to be the benchmarks we're going to run. And the first thing I want to do is I'm just going to create a private const string called date time. And it's going to have the value that I showed you before. This is the thing we're going to use to benchmark it. And then I'm going to create a private static read only date parser. I'm just going to name this parser here. So new date parser. And I'm doing that to make sure that this is only initialized once and then reused across every test. And the great thing about uh, benchmark.net is, is that it will do things like warm up and before run actions for us very, very simply. So you don't have to worry about warming up the application to get exact measurements. And I'm going to show you exactly how that works. Now, first, I'm going to create my benchmark. And I just have to create a method with an attribute on top of it called benchmark. And it's going to be a public void called get year from date time and i just need to call the method i want to benchmark so get year from date time and then provide the date time and this is my benchmark class this is the bare minimum but because i want to get the results in a very nice formatted way and i also want to get memory information i'm going to add a few attributes here as well so first i'm going to say that i want to know uh, uh, about the memory that i'm allocating so i'm going to use the memory diagnoser attribute I'm also going to say that I want, this will come into play later when we add more benchmarks, but essentially I want my ordering 
a summary policy to be uh, fastest to slowest. So I want them to be ordered. And then I also want um, to use the rank column attribute to get a better formatting out of the box. And this is all I have to do to benchmark a single method. So let's go ahead and benchmark that. We're going to go to the program.cs. This is just a donor call application, by the way. And I'm going to go here. And all I'm going to say is benchmark runner dot run. And in that generic type T parameter, I'm going to say date parser benchmarks. And literally, that's it. You have a project that is able to run benchmarks. In order to run them, I could do it from here, but I'm going to show you how to do it with commands. So I'm in the folder where the project is as well. So I'll, I'll do .NET build C release. And that's very important because I want a release of that DLL, not a debug because release DLLs are actually optimized and they perform better. So in order to get a realistic view of my performance, I want it to be released. And then I'm going to CD into that location. In fact, I won't even do that. I'm just going to copy that directory. And I'm going to say .NET and then simply point to the DLL. And now this automatically picked up our um, benchmark and it starts running these benchmarks. And you can see here that it does some workload piloting, some overhead warm up, some overhead actual. You can actually read about all these details and exactly how it operates. I won't go in depth into that side of things, but you can see our benchmarks finished now. And I have this view here, which is the method I'm benchmarking, the mean duration of my execution, and then some extra things like uh, how my garbage collection performed and where it actually was performed, how much memory I allocated. And you can see that this actually allocated no memory and there was no garbage collection here. Uh, you can read the legend here to see exactly what each one of these means. So things like um, the error, like half of 99% confidence interval or uh, the STDD, so standard deviation of all the measurements. And the documentation is pretty good for this project, so you can actually go and see exactly what's going on. But realistically, what I only care about is the mean execution time and how much memory I allocated. And we can see that this performs pretty well. It's 580 nanoseconds to get the year out of an ISO date. Now, this is great, don't get me wrong, but let's see if we can write another method that can actually optimize upon this performance. So I'm going to go back into the date parser and I'm going to say public int get year from split. And I'm going to explain exactly what I mean by that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split on hyphen and hyphen is this symbol, the dash. And I'm going to say date time a string dot split on that separator. And then I'm just going to say return int dot pause split on hyphen. And I want to get the first one because we're splitting on that. So we're going to get one, two and three split objects. But because it's an ISO date, I know it's always going to look like that. So I can actually do this. And very simply, I'm just going to get the first item and pause it as an integer using the int dot pause. So I'm going back to my benchmarks and I'm just copying that. And then I'm saying use the get year from a split method. I'm going to give it the same name. And now that I have more than one, I'm also going to say that this is my baseline benchmark. So this is where it all started. And after that, I will be optimizing. So if I go back here, I can do a new build and I can run the project again. So now it found two benchmarks, as you can see here, and we'll start running them. I'm going to speed this up for you so you don't have to wait. So this is now finished. And as you can see, we have the results back and we can actually see that get year from date time is now the second best because we are almost four times faster with splitting and doing int pass. However, we are actually allocating memory now and you can see that there's some garbage collection going on as well. So if you have the memory and you're caring more about response time, then this is actually a better method to use in this scenario. So. Here we see how the benefit of benchmarking actually gives us more options and deeper understanding of how the things actually work behind the scenes. Because we hear things like clean code and high performing code all the time. But do you know how much faster things are? Well, now you do. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to go ahead and add two more methods because I have two more ideas on how we can make this even faster. I don't know which one will be faster, but we'll see. 
the first one will be called public and get year from substring and now we're gonna use a substring to get the index of the first hyphen and then we're gonna use that so I'm gonna say index of hyphen equals to daytime string dot index of the hyphen symbol and this will tell me that this is here so what I can do after that is I can say return int dot pause and say daytime string dot substring start from zero start from the beginning up to the index of hyphen so this will essentially get the substring from here to here and that's it this is one of my ideas I also have another idea what if we don't actually use uh, the substring this way but we also use substring in a different way you know dotnet 2.2 added the span object in C sharp and you might be familiar with it or not but actually span is used to do some pretty good optimization when it comes down to strings or integers or things like that because it operates differently behind the scenes it's a huge topic and I'm not gonna cover it but I'm just gonna show you how we can use it here so I'm gonna say get year from span I'm gonna say read only span of type char so it's gonna be a collection of characters which is what makes a string I'm gonna say just date time as span let's say here and then I'm gonna say essentially just get the index of what I want again which is the hyphen and then return int dot pause date time as span and then there's no substring but the span class contains the method called slice and this gets a slice of the span and works very much like substring so starts from the beginning all the way to the index of the hyphen so now I have two more methods I'm gonna go ahead and add them in my benchmark class so I'm gonna paste them twice here and I'm gonna get the substring first and this goes here and then I'm gonna get the span and this goes here so I have my benchmarks again back to the command line build it don't forget to build it and dot net run it so now we have four benchmarks now this might take some more time so i'm just gonna speed this up for you and i'm gonna see what the results look like in a bit so the results are now in and you can see here that we have all our four uh, methods actually returning and we can see that we actually optimized it quite a bit from the first thing so get year from daytime which is the first thing we wrote returns at almost 600 nanoseconds the next improvement allocates 160 bytes of memory but returns like four times um, faster and then using the stab string returns at 38 nanoseconds and using this but still allocates 32 bytes of memory and we have some garbage collection and then the span because it's so optimized to not allocate any memory when you get a slice of something it actually allocates nothing and we have 38 nanoseconds so this is a huge optimization if you really needed to do some micro optimization from the first method to the last method which I think is great now if we want to optimize even further I think there is a last uh, method we can use here so I'm gonna go ahead and code it and it's actually a method that actually expands on the last method we wrote so we're still gonna use a read-only uh, span of character but instead of getting it from year span I'm gonna say from year span with manual conversion and what I mean by manual conversion is that I think that int.parse can actually be optimized a little bit here so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get the var year as a span so we're getting essentially a sub span here and that's just the year and we can save our temp which is a temporary year is zero and then uh, we're gonna iterate over each character in the span so I equals zero year of span dot length and then I plus plus and I'm gonna say here temp equals temp multi multiplied by 10 plus and then to convert the character which the character is year as span i minus the character of zero and then i'm gonna just return temp here and this will actually manually pass the character as an integer and i think this is even faster than what we did before and to prove this we're gonna run a benchmark again so 
let's just add the new benchmark here add this here everything is ready so back at our console build it again as a release and run the benchmark and see you when this has completed running so the results are now in and sure enough like i said with a manual conversion we're actually almost what is this four or five times faster than the fastest one we wrote with the span and we still allocate absolutely no memory so from 600 nanoseconds to 7 nanoseconds this is a huge optimization potentially meaningless depending on how um, often this method is actually called but if this method is called like a million times in a minute you would be saving quite a lot of time in this execution and this is what benchmarking is all about it's not about this very high level benchmarks these are just profiling and load tests and stress tests this is just about the smaller and lower testing something else that's worth pointing out is that benchmark.net will actually create artifacts based on the results of our tests meaning you can actually get different views other than this console that you just saw for your results in fact it will give you an html report that you can just give to somebody and share and also a csv and a markdown one and if we just take a look at what this looks like if i simply open it in my browser you will find a friendly view of what the os and what version of dotnet this is running what processor what dotnet version and then the host and the job and then a detailed report of every method and the timings i want to keep this first video on benchmarking very basic but if you want me to take a look into a more advanced approach in these things and give you more details about the topic please leave a comment down below and i'm gonna make a video about it that's all I have for you for today. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my GitHub sponsors for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this, and ring the bell as well to get notifications on new videos. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.